definitely, for example, uh, Miller A, a split flow pattern is more favorable for the Miller A top of the net because what happens is your two jets may phase and you get your southern system where that's the main energy in the southern system. It tends to go up the coast or come up the coast, so that's more favorable. A split flow is favorable for B sometimes, uh, neutral for uh, Cs, and your high amplitude flows. Uh, high amplitude flows can produce a coastal storm, the Miller A, but usually what that happens is you get one of these systems that race up the coast and it produces a lot of precipitation, but only lasts six or eight hours. And we've seen those types of events before, and that's because the flow is so strong and so amplified that when the <coughs> southern system just moves up the coast like at 50 or 60 or 70 miles an hour. So. Miller A typology is based primarily on 500 millibar considerations in the second service map. Uh, secondary considerations. I make that point because sometimes we'll see folks debating about whether it's an A or a B because there's a low for Alabama or Tennessee or Michigan. And the real consideration is the upper air features. Okay, and all these events have special rules. I make sure I didn't jump. Yeah, okay. Good. Um, special rules for the Miller A, the Gulf of Mexico lows. Well, special rule number one with moderate and southeast ridges, it becomes impossible to get the big Gulf of Mexico low to come up the coast. You're not going to get that big system come with a huge ridge over the southeast of Florida. You may still get a wave coming up the coast, and that can produce significant snow. So you still can get a sexy event out of it, but if you're looking for a major historical event, you're not going to get that. Right? Second rule here for Miller A's is the main issue is the track. That is the main issue with Miller A systems. It's whether they track south and east of Hatteras, whether it's a coastal track that goes inland. Those are your main concerns. That's what you're looking for if you're with those types of systems. Um, Quite there you go. Uh, the next one, special rule number three. Watch out for the dreaded dry slot. All right. Uh, cursed be its name. Uh, dry slot, of course, so when you're dealing with major systems coming out of the Gulf of Mexico, what happens is you'll always get your dry slot. And you know, January 2000, everyone's getting all excited about that, and the dry slot moves in New York City and southern New England, you get up with what, six or eight, something like that? And everybody else down, we look at hammered. So the classic of chaos is the big systems coming out of the uh, Gulf of Mexico Always have your dry slots, and you have to watch that carefully. And make sure that it doesn't blow your, your snow for full forecast. Special rule number four, thump snow. We had several events of these uh, this past winter, actually, which is one that we want to talk about. But uh, where you have borderline conditions, and what happens is you'll look at, you know, you look at it 60 or 72 or 84 hours out, and you see the, the precipitation's over, and the 850 temperature is plus three. Well, you know, the problem is that one of the reasons it jumped up that way was because the dry slots come through when you, the precipitation's ended. But if you look during the event, you know, you have those heavy vertical velocities, your 850 temperature is like minus one, minus two, your, your low level temperatures are cold enough, so it falls in snow. And people look at, at, after the event, they see the 850 temperature warming up, they go, oh, it's gonna be rain. Not necessarily. So watch out for thump snow, which is, you know, big heavy snow comes in at once. Uh, special rule five, the track of the southwest, the short wave in the subtropical jet, and to a lesser degree, the southern surface low, is strongly influenced by where the short wave in the subtropical jet develops its neutral tilt, where it develops its negative tilt, and the downstream blocking. So this is just the southern system here we're talking about here. Those three things will determine, and we'll talk about that a little later, but essentially what you want is you want your southern short wave and the southern stream here, we're talking about the Miller A's, you want that to become neutrally tilted when it reaches the Mississippi River, the delta, which is about 90 degrees longitude, all right? If it becomes neutrally tilted over Texas or New Mexico, no, you got problems, that thing's going inland. It's going to be because it's, that's, that's not good enough. Um, and if it becomes negatively tilted, uh, even just because it reaches neutral by the Mississippi Valley doesn't mean that's going to reach around at the perfect negative tilt when it gets to the Appalachians. So we have two checkpoints there. First, the southern short wave's got to be neutral when it reaches the Mississippi Valley, and then it's got to go negative by the time it reaches the Appalachians, which is 80 degrees west longitude. It's got to be both things. You can have one without the other. They're mutually independent of each other. So and that's an important aspect. Also, the last rule here with Miller A systems, uniform snow distribution. Because they're coming up the coast, the snowfall is easy to track um, when you're doing now casting. And generally, you get a more even distribution, 10 inches, 8 inches, 6 inches, 4 inches, 2 inches. So that's the advantage of the Miller A systems. Uh, 500 millibar features, uh, special rules for Miller Bs. Uh, special rule number one, someone's always going to screw the pooch. <laughs> You're always going to lose. You're always going to get in trouble with Miller's Miller B system. Someone's always going to see. I can't believe you're, 50, you're 25 miles away from me. You got nine inches. I got one. Jeez. Always happens. Uh, December 2000, February 69, February 78. Numerous examples of Miller B systems. December 1960. Amazing snow gradients. Boom! It ends right there. And the reason for that is because of the extremely sharp snow gradient here is because 
uh, heavy snow versus no snow, first of all, the Arctic air, the Arctic cold air north of the low, the Miller B system, uh, is very dense often. And then on the northwest side, you also have your NVA, your sinking air. Uh, your dynamics is off the weakest on the northwest side of the developing low or the, or the clipper low. So as a result, the lowest moving towards the Delmarva, you get your snow explosion, your comma head, it's snowing in New York City, it's snowing Long Island, it's snowing in Connecticut, and you're in Northwest Jersey, and you got you got flurries, you got all the stratus, you know, and people are complaining about that. So that can be a problem as well. Uh, also, let's see, special rule number three: there are three types of clipper lows, each with their own distinct tendencies. Uh, people think a clipper low is just one type. There are three types of those. There's a Manitoba Mauler, there's a Saskatchewan Screamer, and Alberta Clipper. Now, uh, those are actually real names. I did not develop those names. Those names, I believe, come from David Ludlow, if I'm not mistaken. The late, great David Ludlow. Of the three of them, the Man Manitoba Mauler is the most dangerous. Now, why is it the most dangerous? Look at Manitoba, look at the East Coast. There's only one way you're going to get a piece of energy, your shortwave, going from Manitoba to New York City or New Jersey or Virginia. And that's if it's going to get death, if it's going to dig and go negative. There's no other way to do that. So the Manitoba Mauler is the most dangerous. That being the case, also the most rare. Uh, February 78 was a Manitoba Mauler. Yeah, um, was he 70,000 Manitoba? Might have been a Saskatchewan Screamer. But that February 78 was a classic piece of it, of the Manitoba Mauler. I think maybe February 69 was as well, the Lindsay Day snowstorm. But most of the clippers are the common, or the most common are the overt clippers. Uh, New England always is favored in, 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 in the Miller Bays. Always. Always favored. Why? Because that jaw of New England, the Cape Cod sticks out like that. Yeah, smack <laughs> so, Miller bees always favor New England. They very rarely do they get down to DC. So, I know folks like to get excited about DC Miller bee snowstorms. You know, don't break out the snow dance yet. That's not time to do that. All right, uh, special rule number four speed hurts the snow totals. Miller bee events have got to slow down as they near the coast. This is highly dependent on downstream blocking. What's going on over Canada? Your 50 50 low, your polar vortex, and your negative NAO positions. And without any significant downstream blocking, models almost always do the QBF by 50%. Almost always. Okay, and then what happened is you're thinking, you're thinking, okay, great snow ratios. It's got 3,800s in there. It's okay, that left to be about six inch, five, six inches in my house. It looks great. And then, and then you go 12 hours of it, and suddenly you have 1,500s. And you go, what the hell happened? Well, that's what happened. The models right before the last couple of events, they really begin to drop off the snow totals. Unless you have downstream blocking. Once it begins to slow down, you've got a different ball game. Then you've got possibilities. But other than that, you know, you, you have to see that you have to see that clipper slow down. And finally, uh, the best snow in the QPF on Miller B systems are at least 50 miles north of the main port max, about 100 miles north of the 500 low, or 50 miles north of the 500 low if it's a closed deep system, one of those really big clippers coming out of Canada. Okay. Downstream blocking. Welcome to the matrix. Downstream blocking is is not just one thing or the other. It's not the NAO, it's not the 50-50 low, it's not the pull of vortex, it's all three events combined together. The key premise is there are textbook positions here or classic positions for each one of these. But the fact is that to get the pattern right, you've got to look at all these together. There are exceptions.